Good day everyone, Ibrahim here with episode 20. Today we're finally going to get started with a login system. A login system or authentication system is almost a controversial subject. Nobody wants to implement it by themselves. The reason is security is really hard to get right. But since we're do-it-yourselfers, we're going to try to build our own. We'll do our best to make it work. So here's how we're going to get started. Number one, we're going to start writing how the code is supposed to work before the implementation. Then we're going to create a new controller for the login system. We're also going to revisit our services. Just like we did with the local view, we're going to add services to the container. The container is only accessible through the controller right now, but we'll upgrade that. We'll add our login system as a service and we'll give services access to the container. Earlier we created an array access system, but it seems to have a bug. So we will work with that. We will upgrade it to fix all the problems it has. Then we're going to create a template for our login. And finally, we'll finish with CSS. All right, let me load up my machine and let's get started. Machine loaded up. Let's get started. All right, so our login, our admin section does not have a login yet. And this is something we're going to fix now. We're going to start by implement, well, writing how we want the, look, the code to look like. So since uh, the controller is always going to call the construct, the construct method, I'm going to start by making sure that it check, checks it here. This is the only area in our, in our framework, uh, the admin section, that requires a login. And this section uses uh, the, dashboard con the dash controller. So we're going to use it here. We're going to write how we want it to implement. Also, we also we will inside the file controller, we'll be able to do the same thing. Here, I'm just trying to figure out what how to make this uh, code look like, because uh, I started thinking first, uh, I'm going to check if the user is authorized and if they're authorized and not on the login page. But I realized, you know what, let's just check if they're authorized inside the code uh, of being authorized. I can check which page they are in. So that's all I want it to look like. Um, and uh, from here, I think uh, I'm going to create a new controller um, called, I decided to call it authentication controller. And from here, we can write all the code. We can create the, we can create uh, a login form. I mean, uh, login action and uh, the forms. This is where all the check-in is going to be done. But uh, yeah, it's just a good way to separate the the features of our framework of our application sorry and also you can see that uh, the for the uh, urls i'm i'm just randomly putting them the reason i can i have this uh, privilege basically is because i i never write the uh, url myself like inside the code i always make call i call the 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 router and it calls it, it creates the correct url so if i decide to change those in the future it's not going to be a big deal. I don't have to go inside the code and hunt all the places where I, I use them. I just have to make sure that the name of the router is correct. That's all. Not so complicated after all. So we're going to have a login, a logout. If for the logout, I'm going to use a little um, different method than the login. I'm going to show you that, I guess, on the next video, because that's where it's supposed to be. But anyway, in here, we, I'm going to update our container which ex which is extended by the all our controllers to make uh, to make use of services remember we did services inside the view only so now we're going to do it inside the controller um, to make sure that i can call for example get markdown and then i have access to them or in our case we're going to do get um, authentication or login however we decide to call it i think i'm going to go with the authentication so this way um, it's accessible here and even worst cases if I need to use the authentication inside uh, our view I can do that too like check if the user is logged in and display some particular thing yeah I, I, we will be able to do that too yeah for example we can get the username so that way we can uh, um, we can uh, display the username the the actual person's name that's cur currently logged in but yeah um, here I, I want to make sure that uh, there's only well, if, if there's only one instance of the service while it's uh, while it's being used, um, yeah, that that makes it much easier. So basically, if I call another controller, um, well, actually, if I call another controller, it'll reuse it. But here, it makes it more much more efficient. If I call uh, multiple times the service, it'll only make use one instance. That's the advantage here. 
And I'm going to copy things from uh, our array object because uh, that's it, that's where it made we made the first calls to the to the uh, uh, to the services. Um, after, of course, I'm going to optimize it to make sure that it's used correctly. But for now, I'm just going to copy and see how it works if it if it's getting if it's working correctly. And I like to make sure uh, use of that uh, instantiate method that I created. That way, um, I can just call, uh, give it the name of the class. It returns an instance of the object. In the future, for example, if I have like any requirement to instantiate a, a, a service, I can just pass it there too. Okay, so now I copied a new service called it uh, authentication. I haven't created a class yet. Okay, now I'm doing that. But uh, now this is where all our login system, all the logic is going to be. Um, the reason it's not part of the framework is part of because, you know, login can be implemented so many different ways. And uh, um, I, want it, I want it to be part of our application. So basically I can reuse it later. If I, if I make use of it inside another um, application I create in future, I can just copy this class there and, uh, you know, we're set. Update the little variables and all. But yeah. It's only going to have, at least for now, it's going to have very few methods. I'm just going to check, like, if uh, if the service is uh, initiated or, like, if it, if the user is authorized and stuff like that. But before that, I want to make sure that my service is being accessed correctly inside the container. Um, hopefully, in the future, I can remove that and put it in some place else. But for now, this is, seems like the right place. And also, if you call a service that doesn't exist, you should throw an error. So, yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Okay, once uh, I refresh, we should see, okay, yeah, need to make it, yeah, for class, that's the thing that was missing, good, okay, and I just put it inside the, the construct of that file, of the uh, authentication to print a string, just so I know that it's working correctly, so if I remove uh, all the code, I can see, I can call it and then see if it works correctly. I'm gonna make the use of that uh, method I said called is uh, is authorized is authorized that way th this is all where all the logic is gonna be but for now we're just gonna say false that the user is not authorized for example okay and let's see what happens uh, if the user is not authorized we want it want to re redirect that user back to the uh, b back to the login page for example so if you come if you come to a, to a login page like if you go to a specific URL and you're not allowed we take you back to the to the uh, login page just to make sure that everything is done correctly yeah well I changed the variable name to user auth um, I haven't really figured out what's the proper term to put in there but for now this should work and also I was thinking how can I should I create a URL and then pass it here inside the controller, but I said that was too much work. So I decided I should extend the authentication service to hand, uh, sorry, the container to be extend to extend the authentication service. This way, I can just call uh, this get request, and then I get the request object. So I can do it directly inside the service. This is going to be a huge advantage in the future. Also, I think uh, in the future I'm going to give the services a few more features. So I'm going to create like a service container, for example, that will make our life much easier. And yeah, um, the login should be pretty simple. I mean, we can, we if we do it like this, we can uh, basically update our login system every any time. Like if we think our our way is not r correct, we can always change it. Anyway, I also discovered that there's a bug in uh, our in uh, our implementation of uh, services uh, inside the array access. Um, basically, what I did was inside each template. Um, we instantiate all the services, which is not correct, but I just wanted to have it work before. And it was working fine for our matter. But now that you see that we have services inside the controller and services inside the template, you see that we have a problem. So every single, uh, every single time we access a template, we get, ex we re, we re reinitiate all the services, which is wrong. So 
uh, we're going to change that. We're going to fix it. We're going to make sure that uh, it's only called once. I mean, we can probably call the instance multiple times, but we will have to update uh, to update that array access to make it more efficient, basically. And all this, all I was doing, if I just replace this for loop right here, and everything should be normal. Um, well, not everything. I, I still need to update these. Uh, remember, these were the features from array access. You can find that at PHP website. Um, I just copied it from there, but and it was fine for our first use. But now I see that if I want to make sure the way I want to use it, this is not going to work out exactly the way it, it is. So I'm going to have to make a few updates. For example, I want to make sure that uh, only when uh, when you uh, you call a service that it is instantiated, uh, we don't want to make sure we don't want to call them all the time because you know that would be a waste of resources. Um, as you can see here, we can see the error, our error printed multiple times, which is not the right thing to do. So, yeah. Coding is debugging. Because <laughs> uh, if you think about it, before you start coding, there's there are no bugs. There are absolutely no bugs until you introduce them. So that's that's okay, though. That's okay. It's just our computer giving us feedback, saying, you know what? That thing you wrote the last time, it's not really working out. So let's change that. Let's update it. That's what's happening here. Um, our code that we did before did not work. And it was silently doing something wrong, but we didn't know. Until now that we're making use of services, we see the, the problems. So, yeah. I'm going to fix that. And yeah, also, I'm not going to be, be using that container variable anymore. I might as well just get rid of it entirely. And I think we're set. That's it. Now services are called once when they're, they're only called when they're called, basically. They're not instantiated every time there's a temp new template. So yeah. All right. I guess the next thing to do will be to you to create a login page, which um, in my opinion, does not need to have a whole lot of things. For example, on the login page, especially in the admin, um, there's only one thing to do: go to the uh, to to log in. And hopefully, I'll also add a way to go back to cancel. For example, we don't want to log in. But other than that, yeah, there shouldn't be much happening on this page. So I'm gonna create a new template that does just that. You know, nothing else. We just uh, basically uh, we're we're not gonna reuse our main template index.html template. We're just gonna create a new template, um, specially for login, and uh, from there we can uh, go on. I'm gonna have to rewrite the whole HTML, so hopefully I can fast make this part a little faster. And I'm a slow typist, of course. That's one thing that is rare: a programmer that's slow, that types slowly. That's me. I type slow. Well, I don't type slow, but you know, I'm figuring things out on the fly here. I'm not, it's not like this is scripted and I know exactly I'm looking at another screen to see what's happening. No, I'm just typing whatever comes to my mind. So that's why you might see me type something, then remove it, and then type something else and remove it again. It's just a process. And hopefully I make it fast enough so you don't have to sit through all this. And of course, I made a little mistake. I use a source attribute instead of href. And uh, you can see me struggling here. Those are uh, kind of hard to memorize. I mean, it's, I have them memorized. I just didn't think about it. It's like wondering why. But then I looked at it one more time and I realized, wait a minute, it's not source, it's href. Which is, I guess, some inconsistency in HTML, but we just have, I mean, it was like that forever, so might as well just accept it. Href usually are for links. I mean, sure, it's called the link tag, but it's used to call the source object. So anyway, yeah, it works. So we're gonna we're gonna modify our template to just to have a form that just has the login on it, and that's about it. This form doesn't need anything else. As long as we can come to this page, we know that we're actually still on scratchblog.com, but uh, and and from there just click uh, write our username, password, and then accept it. That's all, really. I'm still thinking how we're going to implement the login system, if we're going to use database-driven or... Um, I guess database-driven is the best option. I mean, the easiest option. Um, we don't want to have uh, 
because we're you know it's a blog and we don't want to have like something complicated that uh checks server status or anyway i'm talking i don't know what i'm talking about anymore um this is just going to be a small form like we've done this multiple times like the whole admin section is made of forms so you might <clears throat> find this part a little boring but yeah that's what i'm doing right now creating a form with uh, you know username uh password oh and now only now i realized that in the password field i used the type uh, an input type text which is supposed to be password but i guess i'll fix that by the next video yeah because uh, you want to make sure that when you type your password nobody can uh, see it and yeah we're going to be working on css now the thing about uh, uh, password like there's a lot of friends of mine who think since i'm a programmer i should know some ways to hack uh, someone's email and things like that and i always give them the same answer if you really want to hack someone's password just go behind them stand behind them pretend you're not watching and then just take their password watch when they're typing that's it that's the best way to hack someone's email anything else is something made out of hollywood it's not it's not just easy there's you you're not gonna easily hack gmail or hotmail you're gonna the best way to hack is social engineering all right so yes if you already ask someone to to find a password for you yeah you're doing it wrong stop asking them because probably they'll steal your password anyway back to the css css is uh i hope everybody's uh, i mean uh, that everybody's on page with css because it's simple yet a little complicated it's simple because the rules are not that easy yet hard to memorize because you know um especially if you're using an ide it just does autocomplete for you um you don't have to memorize everything but the, the only hard thing about it is the strategy you're going to use like how i'm going to make these things cascade together basically and uh, that's the hard part um, especially aligning things um that's why a lot of people use bootstrap i used bootstrap before and i think it's an amazing framework a css framework but uh, i like to do things my own way since I've, I've been using css for a while now so i just reuse the same techniques i use over and over in previous projects so it doesn't bother me like using bootstrap is actually slower for me because i have to go check the documentation and make sure i do things correctly so someone else can work with but yeah in most of the time if it's my own project i use just plain css from scratch the best time to use a framework is if you're working with a group because you want to make sure everybody's on page because if you're thinking things your way and uh, someone else is thinking their way everybody writes their own style in the css sure you're gonna have a problem but uh yeah might as well if you're in a group might as well use a framework or if you use your own make sure your your code is documented and that you constantly give uh, uh enlighten everybody about how you do your things this is almost the end um we have uh, basically everything almost ready the css is ready the the form is there we this the rest is just aesthetic i'm just gonna add uh i'm gonna add our logo to the back end our image of course is bigger but i'm gonna have to make that a tiny bit smaller using css of course make that smaller and uh, yeah at least when you're on the login page you recognize which website you're on you're on scratchblock.com by the way um i know everybody will be using their own name for their project so hopefully in the future i can have something called cl close to scratchblog.com scratch dash 123blog.com because you know it's never available but yeah I'm, I'm hoping i can do that so people can come here and if i upload the code to github people can access it anyway that's it for today we have our form ready and uh, all we need to do now is uh, make sure that this uh, login system work all right i hope you enjoyed this episode we started the framework for a login system using a service and next time we'll try to complete it Thank you for watching this video, I hope you like it, and don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up if you like this video. Alright, until next time, bye.